This is how I set up my Mac for development as a full-time computer science student and software developer. Most of the work I do is full-stack web development, so that'll be more of what this video is geared towards, but there will be apps and tools that I mentioned that will still be useful for any type of programming. These make my coding experience more enjoyable and help me to work more efficiently. To start, the first thing I do whenever setting up a new Mac is clean up my desktop so that it doesn't get cluttered. In desktop and dock settings, I uncheck show items on the desktop as having a bunch of files showing is distracting, but more importantly, I often screen share, so don't want any of those to be showing. Next, this is purely an aesthetic thing, but having a nice wallpaper can make your development environment look much better. Once this is done, I start to clean up my dock, first by removing practically everything off of it and unchecking show suggested and recent apps in the dock. I also recently started to automatically hide it, as this prevents me from getting distracted by another app I left open, but also lets me go full screen and take advantage of my entire ultra wide. By default, the reveal animation takes a little bit longer than I'd like, so there's a command you can run in the terminal that removes the delay but keeps the smooth animation. The last thing I do is throw the dock onto the right side, which doesn't help with anything really, but I think it looks good there. Now, Brew is a package manager for Mac that makes it really easy to download new apps right from the command line. One app I downloaded recently through Brew is Alt-Tab, which gives you Windows-like Alt-Tab behavior by showing you a preview of every open window. When you have multiple windows of the same app, they show up here, which doesn't happen by default in macOS. Another useful app is Hidden Bar, which is a free and open source alternative to Bartender, which I've used in the past. Basically, this lets you clean up your menu bar by only keeping the absolute essentials visible and hiding everything else. Now, getting more into my development setup, I work with Express for all of my side projects, so one of the first things I need to install is Node.js. You can install Node via an installer, but I personally use NVM, which makes it easy to swap between versions if needed and install others quickly. Next, I install Git through Homebrew and oh my zish with the curl command on their website. Once that's done, I created a repo that I can quickly clone anytime I need to set up a new Mac. This contains my zishrc and git config files so that I don't have to keep manually creating these. There's also a script in there that I stole from another video, which instantly copies these files into your Mac's root directory. So the git config file simply sets my name and email with the zish file setting the theme I use along with the git plugin. I also created aliases for listing files, opening files, and then a bunch for git, which make it easier to set up a new repo, add an origin, commit, push, etc. With that general setup out of the way, a few tools and apps that I used almost daily while developing are really helpful. Raycast is the first, and this is at first glance just a quick launcher slash spotlight replacement, but as you use it more, you realize just how powerful it actually is. Something I've been getting a lot of use out of recently with it is clipboard history. Practically all day while I code, I'm copying and pasting blocks between my browser, and it makes it incredibly easy to find lines you copied hours ago. Another feature I use while developing is quick AI. Just hitting command space brings up Raycast and then tab instantly enters AI chat. This is so convenient to have and I do find myself using this more often than Google searches a lot of the time. Raycast gets even better though once you start introducing extensions. One of the most recent ones I installed was Tailwind CSS which lets me instantly search through all of the utility classes or find a page in their documentation. I'll usually use Postman when building APIs but having the curl extension is is actually a really nice way to quickly test my routes. If you ever need an SVG icon, Iconify makes it really simple to search through a bunch of icon packs and instantly copy the SVG code that you can paste. Aside from AI, everything is completely free, but the one feature that made me subscribe to their pro plan was cross max syncing. This will seamlessly sync all of your snippets, keyboard shortcuts, and extensions, which if you have a separate Mac for work and personal use is really useful. Next, for my browser, I use Arc and I switched to it from Chrome a few months ago and haven't looked back. The biggest change is the sidebar that you can quickly hide with command S to have a super clean looking window. You can also create separate spaces with different tabs and accounts for each to separate your personal and work tabs. Personally, I like to have separate tabs for YouTube, work, and development, as I have different bookmarks for each. Now, Arc is built with Chromium under the hood, so you have all the Chrome dev tools along with the Chrome extensions, but I find that Arc developer mode is a little easier to use. You can quickly modify the URL, access the console, network tab, and inspect element, all easily at the top of the window. In the top right corner, you then have access to your pinned extensions or can easily search through the other ones. 
There's a ton of extensions out there for all of the niche use cases you may have, but probably the one I get the most use out of is Video Speed Controller. There's a lot of variations, but the one I really like is called Video Speed Controller for HTML videos, and this lets you set a keyboard shortcut to instantly change the speed. When working on side projects, I like to experiment with fonts, so what font is really useful to have to see what other sites are using. Similarly, Wappalizer is a cool tool that allows you to check the tech stack of other sites. I would mention a color picker, but this is actually an extension in Raycast that works across the entire OS. Now, for my terminal, I used to use iTerm2, but recently switched over to Warp and really like it. It has AI built in, which is great if you forget certain commands. There's a whole chat tab, but simply typing natural language into the command line will generate an output. More often though, I get value from the smart auto completions, which are really convenient. Tying in with the Raycast extension, you can quickly open new tabs or even go straight to a directory on your machine, the latter of which I use all the time. I made a few changes to Warp, first being downloading their themes from GitHub and enabling Warp Dark. Next, I lowered the window opacity and boosted the blur, and finally, added a global hotkey which brings up a terminal pinned to the top of my screen. You can do this in iTerm, but I only found out this was possible a few days ago, and it's been game changing. Next, for my code editor, I use VS Code, which I open up every time by hitting Option V. I've tried JetBrains IDEs and do like them, but just find VS Code's nicer for web development because of how many useful extensions it has. The first few are purely for aesthetics, but I think are worth downloading. For icons, I use Glyph for VS Code and then select the legacy style, along with installing the material product icons. I'm not a huge fan of super colorful icons, so these are perfect. They fit along nicely with the theme Minimal from Nishabosh, and together give my editor a very clean look. A lot of you guys have asked for my theme, so I threw links to everything on a Notion page that I left in the description. Now, the first functional extension I use is GitHub Copilot, which to be honest only works well sometimes, but when it does, it's something I'm grateful for. In my experience, it works the best if you already have similar code in your project or are creating a pretty simple function. Auto renaming tags is an extension that's so convenient as having to go manually change a tag, especially when you have a large code block, is a pain. Now, I type fairly fast, but am constantly making spelling mistakes, so spell checker is a must have, especially when you're pushing code to production with real users. Whenever I don't use the curl raycast extension, I use Postman within VS Code, which is really nice to have within the editor without requiring me to go to the browser or an app. The Tailwind Raycast extension is really nice, but having Tailwind IntelliSense is great for once the classes are actually in my project, as I can just hover over them and get a quick preview of the real CSS. There's a lot of times while working on something that I realize I need to either fix or add something, so I leave a to-do comment. These work fine as you can search them in the code base, but they're very easy to miss when scrolling by, so to-do highlights solves this problem. So that's how I've been coding on Mac recently, and it's worked really well for me, but if there's something I missed, let me know down below. If if you found this helpful, watch this video next where I talk more generally about how I set up my Mac so it doesn't ruin my life. Take care.